everybody, we're going to have a swearing in uh, before we call the meetings to order. And there's going to be two meetings tonight. The first one will be the Public Facilities Corporation, and the next one will be the Fiscal Court meeting. So before we get started, our new 4th District Master, Brian Daniels here, and I'm going to uh, swear him in. So if you don't mind, Brian, raise your right hand. You don't have to repeat after me, but every time I pause, say, I do. <laughs> I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue to be a citizen thereof. I do. And that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability the office of magistrate according to law. I do. And I do further solemnly swear that since the adoption of this present Constitution, I being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within the state or out of it, nor have I accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as a second in carrying out a challenge, nor aided a sense in any person thus offending, so help me God. I do. You're official. You're the, you're the, you're the, you're the man. Call that to order this meeting of the Ohio County Public Facility Corporation. Uh, for uh, I'm going to uh, turn this uh, presentation over to our county attorney, Justin Camp. Okay, so each of you serve on the Public Facilities Corporation, uh, which really only asset is the hospital property. <clears throat> and so the hospital is redoing, they had their construction bonds and now they're doing for the more permanent financing. So as the owner of the, um, the real estate, um, we will need to have a meeting with respect to the public uh, facilities corporation and do two things. One of them is pass a resolution authorizing uh, the public facilities corporation to enter into the uh, documents necessary to secure the real estate and to promise to pay the loan with respect to uh, the hospital bonds. And so uh, this will be resolution 2024-1 and I think hopefully each of you have seen it. If you haven't, it's, it's very similar to the 2000, I think it was maybe 2021 resolution that we passed, which was the original entry of the uh, My thing is that we're not liable on any of this. So the Public Facilities Corporation is liable, but they don't have any assets other than the realty. Yes. I have, one of the things that I've been in discussions with the bond uh, attorney and with U USDA, we've had some discussions the last few days. I wanted some modifications in the documents to accurately reflect the county itself, not the fiscal court, nor Ohio County as a whole are responsible for this debt. Uh, the hospital will be paying it. The hospital certainly has no objection to that because they intend to. Don't have any reason to doubt that they won't. But it will not uh, place. The, it's not supposed to place the county in any type of uh, obligation other than the public facilities. So it asks to pass the first resolution, which is for them to enter into this. Uh, Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. The motion by Jason Bullock. Second. Second by, by Bo Bennett. Is there any discussion? Being none, I'm basically aye. Uh, opposed like saying that resolution is passed. The second resolution that we need is just mainly for convenience of being able to can sign. Uh, normally it would be uh, Judge Johnson as the president of the Public Facilities Corporation. However, he will be out of town, I think, on vacation, maybe, Judge, is that yeah, right? Yeah, on the 16th. On the 16th, which is the closing date that the uh, USDA and the hospital and bonding corporation are supposed to meet and close. And so this resolution would have Mr. Bullock uh, execute those documents in lieu of Mr. Johnson. And uh, I'd ask that resolution be passed because I think you are available, Jason, on that day. Yeah, I am. That's the reason I asked the question because I don't know the judge is bailing out on me. But my <laughs> name could be on it. You got to make pass. sure that you're going to pay it back up. Yeah, that's a, that was the question. 
Do I have a motion on, on 20, 2025-2? Move. Motion by Larry Parker. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Is there any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Opposed uh, like sign. That one passes. We have another third one. Uh, that is all the meeting that we would need for the uh, Public facilities. Okay. Well, we need to do another one during the court. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll come back to it just as soon as we get through those first three items. Okay. Call this meeting the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Jason Bullock to lead us in a prayer and place the flag. All right, yes, please. Dear Lord, we just love you. We thank you so much for this opportunity we have to be here today. We just uh, pray that you be with our county. We pray that uh, the people were safe, that there was no damage done in this recent this little storm that just went through. Dear Lord, we just pray that our people were protected. Dear Lord, uh, today, um, our friend Dustin here in the crowd, we just pray that his, uh, he had a cousin that had a wreck this morning and is in surgery. And we just pray that you be with Jared and that you uh, wrap your loving arms around that family and comfort them this time. Dear Lord, again, just be with our county. Help us to grow. Help us to do good things for our, our people. And I ask for wisdom in these meetings, dear Lord. And it's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before you, you have the uh, minutes of the tw uh, June 25th meeting. Uh, we need a motion to approve. Make a motion. Motion by both men. Second. Second by Michael McKinney to approve the minutes. Are there any discussion? Correction or additions to the minutes. Discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Hold like sign. The minutes have passed. Before you, you have the uh, uh, bills, payments, payments, and transfers. Is there a late list? No. No like with no late list. Bills, payments, payments, and transfers. We need a motion to approve that. Then we discuss it if we need to. Make a motion. motion. Motion by Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Is there any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers? Any discussion? On, on these uh, <coughs> transfers and uh, community contributions, is that left over, rolled over from last year? No. Uh, some of the surplus money we had, we put an extra ten thousand in there. So now that it's up to twenty. That's total with yeah. last year and yeah. Well, no, what was no it's what we included in the budget originally, and then what we added to it. But that's also what we had left from last year, correct? No, we didn't have anything left from last year. But the. The uh, ten thousand discretionary money. Well, that's discretionary. I thought you said community contributions. This is new. We haven't had this for many years, Larry. Okay. Now you're all. Yeah, but he didn't lose his money from last year. No. Correct. You didn't Correct. know. But if you have any discretionary money, you still have it. I'll explain that to you later. So you didn't have to do that. You're talking about your all's individual. Correct. You are correct. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? This each district gets to use this, correct? The ten thousand. No, it's as a whole. It's a group as a whole. Which line? So what's in my district? Another district can use my. No. Which line are you talking about? I'm talking about it's on page two. Okay. Community contributions, district five. That's just yours. 
That's, That's restricted to you, okay. District 5. Well, there's not a question. Yes, yes. This is just my time. Okay, we missed okay, I thought you were talking about that new fine. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, any further discussion on bills? Being none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay, now go back to this hospital thing and do the resolutions we got to do for it on fiscal court. And back to you, Justin. Yeah, just the fiscal court as a whole, um, similar to the what the Public Facilities Corporation just passed, we need the resolution indicating that fiscal court approves the public facilities and taking action that uh, that was that was just passed. Go hear a motion. Motion. Motion with Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Bobin. Is there any discussion? Being none, on verse say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Okay. Okay. Uh, next we have every year, if y'all remember, ever Ju July, we have to do a budget amendment right off the bat. And Larry, that's where that restricts your, your discretionary money and things that go like that. That's what this is all about. Ordinance 2025-1, this is first reading of the budget amendment. And basically that's what it was for, it was for your road offers. Now hear a motion. I make a motion. Motion with Jason. Look. Take it by Bo Ben. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion of it? If not, roll call, Miranda. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Next, we have a speaker that is coming forward. Uh, Jason Chen, he's going to talk to us about going on in OCA. Can y'all hear me all right? Hear me? No. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come speak to you again, Judge and Magistrates. Uh, come with some pretty exciting news, honestly. Uh, Site Selection Magazine is the, it's the economic development magazine for the world. Uh, this year, they've compiled a list of their top 20 counties for economic development. And can you believe who ended up at number 10? Ohio County. So, wow. uh, that's, that, 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 that's the whole country. That's it. Yeah. Well, now, when I say we end up number 10, it's, it, that's in the secondary list per capita because yeah. we can't compete with Mesa, Arizona, or Dallas, BC, Texas. Yeah. But we did end up number 10th on that. The only county in Kentucky to beat us was Carroll County, which is directly across from Cincinnati and gets all that overflow from Ohio. So. There was four counties from Kentucky that made it, the other two being Simpson and uh, Hancock. So, and that's based on the number uh, of the dollar figure of capital investments from 23 to 24, and then some other stuff they look at as far as recruitment and different things. So, so I just come to say thank you uh, because it, it really stems from the years past. I mean, the investment y'all make in the economic development, the foresight of the park to join the regional group, uh, you know, you were years ahead. I know it's taken a long time to get that park to where we hoped it would be, uh, but it's coming. So we've got a great tenant out there in Kentucky Whiskey. Uh, we're going to announce, hopefully, within the next week, uh, another little project. It's not going to employ as many, but it's going to be a huge asset for the county in this region. Uh, it will draw people into Ohio County uh, for different events and venue. I mean, it, it's going to be huge for us. There's nothing you know, around us in a county this size that, that can offer that. So, so that, that's some positive news. Um, we're still working with two or three prospects, you know, and, and that's the hardest part for me is because when they look at you and say, we're in, I think they're in. Well, that in is just until they run it up the chain and, you know, they get drug out six months and, then, you know, it's just, I don't deal with that very well. If you tell me something, I expect it. Uh, but, but we've got some really good prospects. Uh, no huge job amounts, but you know, with what's going on at, at Dunaway Timber and Neo and Young's, I mean, we've, we've got some things going. 
So WPT, I just WPT. come in, to, sir. And WPT. And WPT, absolutely. And that, that's uh, that's an impressive project. I mean, on a federal level, they they're playing an important role uh, for this nation. So uh, just wanted to come in, see if you guys had any questions. I like to touch base with you every once in a while and let you know that you know you can call anytime. Um, and, you know, if you have a question or if there's any concern, if you hear something, you know, let me know. So with that, you know, I told him I'd keep it short and sweet. So I don't know how sweet, but but it is some good news. And uh, Jason, you're, you're working on something else real exciting to me that we can't talk about much. But the possibility we'll get another industrial site. Yeah, and this one will be us. And, and, and actually, and, they, and, they, and we're looking at 50 to 70 megawatts of power on that site. We, we had a long conversation today, and if that happens, it, it'll be a It'll be a shot in the arm for this region because there's nothing with that uh, electrical capacity uh, around. And, that, and that's our side. That's, that's our side. Region that, side. That's 100 percent us. About 5,000 acres with the potential of growing. So uh, that that's super exciting. That could bring something you know huge in. But but we're still ways on that. You know, there's still some hurdles to jump through. But but they're excited, and that's got the, the judge and I really excited. So. So, and then we're getting uh, Beaver Dam's going, getting ready to announce a new uh, a new little project uh, within the city limits of Beaver Dam. That should be announced in probably two weeks. So some other little things are happening. So any questions, concerns, anything I missed? Appreciate it. Well, I appreciate all y'all do to support economic development, and you know, and it, it truly pays off with recognition like. Site Selection Magazine. I mean, that, that that's a huge honor, uh, and you should be proud of that for what you've done. Well, we appreciate you guys and our volunteers. Like I said, I'll see that you know they come Absolutely. in and help us out for volunteering. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Jason. Angel, would you like to come up to the mic there? Because I don't think you yelled as loud as Jason did, oh so we we'll want to hear you. My mouth's pretty big, though. So I just wanted to come. Thank you for inviting me to come or allowing me to come and speak to you all. I wanted to talk to you all about Sleep in Heavenly Peace. It's a nationwide 501-3C nonprofit organization that's in U.S., Canada, Bahamas, and Bermuda. And we just got back from training about a month ago. We we're bringing that a new chapter here to Ohio County. So all the chapters are standalone financially. And what we'll be doing is building beds for kids 3 to 17 that don't have them. And when they deliver the bed, they also get a mattress the bedding and a pillow and it's really hard to find any statistics you can find statistics on poverty and on uh, can you get a little closer to the yes. mic I, I and food insecurity and things like that but it's hard to find numbers on kids without beds but from what i could find and this data was back in 2020 so it's probably gotten worse two to three percent of kids in america don't have a bed so there most of them are sleeping on the floor and we heard a lot of stories and training about children even with brain injuries from lack of oxygen from sleeping on inflatable beds that went down in the middle of the night or co-sleeping with multiple siblings or family members and just the detriment and even if something like that doesn't happen to them it's definitely mentally physically and emotionally hard on them it, going to school without enough sleep and depression anxiety obesity all different kinds of things can stem from not having a safe, comfortable bed. And having a bed is something that's your own. That's so, a lot of those kids don't have anything to call their own. So if we can give them a bed, that's one thing that they can call their own and also help them mentally, physically, and, and with their health. So we are asking for $5,000 to get started. We're having, gonna have our team build on the 20th. And then as soon as we have that team build on the 20th, we will be open to applications for the county. It takes about 250 to $300 for the bed, the mattress, the bedding, and the pillow. And Sleep in Heavenly Peace has gotten the top platinum award from GuideStar for using funds for what you're donating them for, and that's to get kids off of the floor. They keep their overhead around 9%, which is amazing for any nonprofit profit. That's a really good number. So we're really excited to bring that here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Well, uh, I think it's a wonderful thing, and Angel, I know you and your husband and others have devoted a lot of time to this already to try to get going. When you came and spoke with me a few months ago, uh, I, something I never thought of, yeah. I, I never realized, 
that we had a lot of kids in our county that didn't didn't uh, have a bad sleep on. Yeah, and when you think about when you have a bad night's sleep, how much how sleep how much it impacts you, your focus, and just a lot of different things, or even going on vacation in a different bed, how much it impacts you, and you're still in a bed. So you can only imagine being a child without a bed, night after night after night, how that's going to impact you. And they probably I mean, uh, I'm a family resource coordinator. Yes, yeah, and you were. And asking. so I, I see that a lot when yes. I go up to the houses. Either sleeping on the couch, they're sleeping on the floor, or they're all sharing a bed. Yes. You know, then a lot of them don't even have their own bedroom because right. you know they don't have. It. We're fortunate enough to have a three-bedroom house or four little day homes when you're in an apartment with three or four kids. So I see that a lot. Yeah, there's a chapter in Owensboro we've been working with before we decided to bring it here in Ohio County, and we've done some deliveries, and we see the same thing. Sometimes you're setting up beds in kitchens and in living rooms. They really don't have the space, but it's so important for them to have a bed, and I know that you guys will help join with us to make sure that happens. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I've given you all brochures. My phone number is on the back and email address. If you have questions after, contact me anytime. I'll be happy. Is this something like if a school situation to you know, being myself or any other family resource that we had a kid, I don't know how it's long it takes, so we can contact you and say, because if we buy mattress, usually buy a twin mattress, it's $100. And then, right. So this is not a bad deal for a bed. Right, for everything. So it might, we might reach out and say, hey, we have a kid we need. Can we contact how soon? You can contact me or you can actually apply for them. You can put yourself in as a reference and you can apply for them once it's open to applications. All right. Uh, yes, okay. quick question. So anyone yes. can go online and apply here, correct? Yes, as soon as we have the team build on the 20th, they will open up. Now you can go and apply to our chapter, but you will get an automatic response that we're closed because we don't have beds. But as soon as we do this team bill, it will open us up to be able to accept applications and start working those and contacting people and setting them up for deliveries. And we should have a community bill probably a couple of weeks after the team build, so it should move pretty quickly. And if people want to donate, can they donate you know, new bedding from Walmart or do they only donate money? How do they do that? They can donate money, they can get checks to me, they can drop them off. We have a couple of drop off drop off places for bedding and for donations. Um, we have Hair Graphics in Beaver Dam, and then we also have Shepherd's Market that has agreed, and I'm talking to some churches to see if they would be willing as well. But a lot of churches will do bedding drives. Uh, checks can be written to sleep in heavenly peace, and I'll make sure that our chapter gets the credit for that. I'll send those in and make sure they go towards Ohio County. So there's multiple ways. You can also do it online if people prefer to do it online. But lots of different ways you can help. And if you can't afford to help monetarily, please come out and volunteer with us. Pray over the organization and everybody involved. There's so many ways to be involved if you can't financially help. Uh, guys, uh, I think we do it if maybe some of us can do it uh, a thousand piece from our discretionary fund and then finish it up with this uh, new fund that we got this first meeting we've had if that was even available our, our community contributions uh, I know I would will it, be willing to do a thousand of mine and if some of the other of you would and then we wouldn't have to take as much out of the community contribution I think it's a really good cause and we should probably do it What's your, your guys, what y'all thought? I, I don't mind to do it to you either, but I, I would just say once we leave here, we can just tell Ann how much we want to take. Uh, the, they can approach Ann and say, okay, and then whatever's not used or whatever, then we can look in the community fund. But can we do that and that means it'll be two weeks? Yes. Or better before we get back with you on the rest of it. That's fine. Thank I you all so much. I give any because I've got three parks in my district. I've got a uh, youth group in Horse Springs that I give to and uh, three fire departments so my discretionary money is pretty thin. And that's kind of why I was saying we'll just do it because I don't know each speaker but Dave and I will work out something. Yeah, we'll do what you said. And it might not be 5,000 it might be but I think it's a great program. If, yeah probably the, all, all these put together probably that. so we'll get back with you. And, and, uh, I'll commit to a thousand for my discretionary. And I'm a thousand. Okay. And Brian a thousand. So that's three right there. Jason still scratching his head. No, I believe I said. You're not. <laughs> I don't have an idea.
Philip Michael, Jason, me, and Brian so far. Darn it, we're nearly got you there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just think that's because I don't want you to watch. Okay. Um, you can down there. You can down there. I don't know what you're saying today. Okay. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. And uh, next up, we have Mary Ann Piper. She's going to sing the lead, and she's got a choir with her. <laughs> I wish my name was Angel. That's. <laughs> a good name to have when you're asking for things. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for allowing me to come today. Um, I've come with Ohio County United for Youth. We also have three other people here, Miss Jamie and Chanda and uh, Claudia. Um, but I uh, don't know if you've heard of us yet, but um, this is an all-volunteer group that started uh, last year in Ohio County. Um, we are uh, seeking to build developmental assets for young people. If you remember the work of Together We Care, that's what we were trying to do at that time in the community. And then uh, they had a staff and, and money from the federal government for drug and alcohol prevention. Um, and of course that kind of uh, <laughs> stopped. And um, so, but we want to continue to do that work. I think we all are aware that uh, there's probably not a more challenging time um, in, in the times that we can remember for young people. And uh, the statistics show that, especially after the pandemic and the emotional and uh, uh, psychological uh, effects of that, that many young people are struggling uh, with their mental health and in other ways. So we want to build Ohio County uh, for young people. And uh, this is a wonderful community already, I think. Uh, we know that there are people who do want to do great things for youth. And so I think it's a matter of us just uh, gathering our personal resources and perhaps a little bit of finances to try to do things that will help youth. I didn't arrive in time enough to give you a paper, but um, afterwards, if it's okay, I'll give you a summary of what we've been working, uh, working with. Uh, we have four committees, and they're uh, Celebrate the Child, so we're continuing Celebrate the Child, which was once a project of uh, Together We Care, and uh, that has been going for 30, over 30 years. Um, something that we know that young people remember and um, see as a day where they're recognized for the important uh, group of people they are. Uh, we have a committee for, that's anti-bullying to try to work with the school system and the community to prevent uh, bullying among young people. We have a committee that's working with life and career preparation. Uh, we have the Shepherds and some other uh, awesome people that are excited about doing that. And uh, we also have a committee that is dealing with youth empowerment. We know that um, that is very, very important for young people to feel that they have a place in the community, that they can do good, that they can uh, make a difference. And so that committee is working in that area and also to educate and build the 40 assets in the community. So uh, we've got a really good group of people. You can see the caliber of these uh, ladies that are here today. Uh, uh, Arthur Leach is one of the people that's been working with us. And I think he's a great example of someone who grew up in Ohio County and experienced a lot of developmental assets. And now we see him serving in the community in, in many different ways and, and raising a good family. So that's what we're working towards. Uh, we do know that when young people have 30 or more of the 40 developmental assets, they're almost guaranteed to avoid drug and alcohol abuse, early sexual involvement, violence, all the things we want kids not to partake of. And then they have lots of positive behaviors like success in school and uh, working to help others in the community. So. Um, our request of the fiscal court is uh, to uh, ask you, um, I don't know who among you might remember, but at one time uh, there was a youth representative to the school board, to the fiscal court, and also to some of the city councils. And uh, the, the purpose of that is to help young people understand government, to be a part of helping you make good decisions, 
if there was going to be um, a proposal for a skate park or anything that would involve young people, they would be able to give input to you. And of course, um, that is just an advisory role. It would be a young person um, sitting here with you um, at least once a month at your meetings. And so we, uh, we've approached Beaverdam City Council. They're favorable about that for them. And we'd like to approach you uh, to see if that would be something that you would consider. Also, um, just like um, uh, Angel's group, um, we do need a little bit of money to function. The kind of projects that we are doing, um, I'll give you an example, is uh, in September we're having Ohio County Youth Sunday. And so that is the day we're inviting all of the churches in the county to uh, recognize young people, to let them give the sermon, to let them provide music, to recognize their accomplishments. Um, and it does, it's not gonna cost much money, but we do need to have some means to uh, uh, publicize it and uh, to do some, some special things for those churches. So uh, the other kind of things that we're doing, uh, we have a, a special fund for Celebrate the Child. We were able to fund that with community contributions this year. Um, we are, um, for instance, uh, on August 1st, we're going to Beaverdam uh, Housing Authority and having an activity there to teach the young people there about assets. Uh, on August 7th, we're doing the great pencil handout. And I know the judge and some of uh, the others of you have participated in that in the past. And that's when we'll be giving a pencil to each student as they enter the building on the first day of school and wishing them success. Those kind of things where we are able to involve people in the community and uh, show young people that we care really do mean something to kids. We've actually had kids at high school say, uh, well, thanks, I didn't bring a pencil. So they've come to school on the first day without a pencil and we're able to give them one. But um, that is something, if any of you are interested in participating in, we'd love to have you sign up. You have to be there at the school, at a school of your choice, at a quarter to seven in the morning. But um, th those are the kind of things we want to do. Uh, they don't, again, don't cost a lot of money. Uh, the pencil handout actually has been financed by ASAP, and so they are donating the money uh, for us to get the pencils this year. So we would like to request, if it would be possible, $1,000 from the court this year, and that will give us a chance to fund these sort of activities and to, um, to do the asset building uh, promotion in the community, so. David. I w if I could suggest, if you could come see me tomorrow, I really think Kentucky ASAP could fund the thousand dollars because it is in drug prevention in a roundabout way. Oh. So. Um, if not, well, Ann will bring it back to us next month. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and we've got a little great. application to fill out. Okay. I, I think it would be a good fit for that. Yeah, and of course, Ann, you hear uh, a young person here. Uh, I think it'd be just wonderful. And with Poland ever time with their ideas when I told the county officials we would uh, them as well. They had a little something to tell us about the impact. Or we had something to ask them we could. Thank you. That I is remember when they did that before. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's some, we have some high caliber kids here, you know, that really want to uh, learn and, and do well. And of course, that's a great thing for them to uh, have on their application for college to have been interested in, in government. So we appreciate Coach Jim that. was Oh, yeah. He was here with the fiscal court then. Uh -huh. That's Jody's, uh, Jody's uh, son. Yeah. That's, isn't that great to see yeah. those young people grow up and do? He's, he's done a great job in his, his life. Please. Thank you for that. They are paying for our pencils already. Yes. I think that's close. That was yeah, yeah. If so you'll, we'll do that. I don't know if you're going to stay, but if you're not going to stay, if you'll just stop by tomorrow or before I leave tonight, and I'll give you just a real quick little thing to fill out, but I believe that would be a good fit. Thank you. Thank you so much. I failed to say that some of you may already know that um, we are, the, we're using your 501c3 from Ohio County Resources, and Miss Ann has been so helpful to us in, in doing our finances. So um, there's no overhead, you know, we're just, it's all volunteer, and uh, every, so every bit of money will go right towards young people, so. Mary, if you quickly want to introduce your guests you brought with you. Jamie, Jamie Scudder. I'm out here. Jamie, do you want to say anything? <laughs> 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And as I said, these other two ladies are, are members of our group too. Okay. So we'd love to invite you up. You'll see on this paper that I want to leave you, there's a summary of our, uh, some of the stuff that I've told you and also an invitation to our next meeting is on Monday at 5 p.m. at the Ohio County Extension Office. So we'd love to have your involvement. Um, every person can, and that's what's great about assets. You don't have to even come to a meeting, but when you know about developmental assets, you can do something in your own life, in your church, on the fiscal court. Um, if you, when you're um, uh, allowing a young person to come in and be a representative, that's certainly asset building. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two uh, personnel things here. <coughs> Uh, the first one is at the golf course, and it's uh, Jesse Willis. This is an open position, thirteen ninety nine, and it is. Uh, let me just say season one part time. Seasonal. 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 So roll call. Matthew. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Johnson? Yeah. Daniel? Yes. When was the effective date, guys? Oh, that one was on 7-1. Uh, uh, the next one's the road department. The truck driver and operator uh, named Dallas Frame. He'll be at uh, 1829 because he has some add-ons. He has a Class A CDL and a tanker. Uh, so that's it, and uh, his effective date was uh, uh, seven one as well. So. More view? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Okay, Mr. Givens, why don't you come up here? You got me in. She's gonna get you bids. Right. You can open them. This is where, this is his uh, the ARPA money was given to the uh, Rockport Fire Department, and they bid out for equipment. Go ahead and watch you get it. Tell them what the equipment was. Uh, we were trying to replace a breathing air compressor for our air packs to refill the, our air bottles. Our old one had some problems and can no longer get parts for it, so we're having to do a complete replacement. And those things have gone tripled in price in the last two years. Uh, it's just about like everything else has. Yeah. These are two of them? Yep. You want to open them and read them to us? Here. First bid is from Atlantic Fire Apparatus. Copies here. Have y'all gotten copies of it yet? Or? No, 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 that's it. We don't couldn't open them tonight. That is. Yeah. So, you want to, Jason, read the amount on there? Um, for everything, we're looking at several things here. Total about forty-eight thousand six six hundred seventy-three dollars and ten cents. That's okay. a spray included with sixteen hundred dollars a spray. Okay, let's see what the other one is. This is or bid should be from Mid American Fire Apparatus. Uh, they have a total of fifty two thousand nine hundred. So uh, apples of the same bid would we'll look and see. Basically the same equipment. Okay. Is there a reason we wouldn't take the low bid? We'll see. Uh, they got a whole thing listed. No, let's see. The stuff with Mid America, I was thinking right, that was Matco compressors. That business has been around for ever. Uh, 
this other company, I really don't know much about this other compressor as far as the quality and the serviceability of it. I'll, yeah. And you actually just have a budget of 50 on that, don't you? Yes. Isn't that right, Ann? Yes. It's a bit different than the compressor price. That's the big Do you think, I mean, do you think okay. there's so big of a difference between the two? Uh, I don't think there's that big of a difference, but my only concern is if I get in the same situation I am now, have a perfectly good piece of equipment that I should be able to get fixed for a thousand dollars, but they don't make parts for it no more. I, I want to really try to avoid getting into that situation down the road. And the and the one that's a little bit more expensive would be easier to get fit parts for. I do believe so. Uh, I know, like I said, they've got a whole lot better reputation. Well, I ain't gonna say better reputation. I am more familiar with their reputation. Well, does the fire department have enough money to make up the difference between the 50 yeah. and that one? Okay. Cheap is not always the best. Yeah. No. So are you recommending? What about warranty issues? Is there yeah. any difference in the warranty issues? Maybe this or warranty issues? That uh, would be. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Well, this one list this warranty issue or the other one doesn't. Ryan's trying to find the warranty on this one. The one from Mid America, like that's that more known company, I'm sure the warranty are top of the line. I'm sure. I, I don't know that for about two years. It's one from Atlantic, it's two years or around 100 hours. I mean, it's his money. There's a lot more detail on that language. Uh, this I mean, it's from Atlantic, if you have any questions. Five years. Oh, okay. What's this one say? No, it's not a warning channel. What's the warranty on there? Yes, sir. So it comes with a two-year standard warranty. Um, I did include on the quote an extended five-year warranty. That's optional. Um, I, I spoke with Chief and he recommended you talk about your all's issues with being like high and dry. Yeah. And we took that into account and offered you all that as well. Um, still being under that price with more coverage. Um, I would like to say the Arctic's been around for a while. Um, they're one of the top compressor companies in the country. They're very well known. Um, we have a lot of good um, compliments from our customers on them. They, they seem to be very happy with them. Um, our SVA tech as well, Chief, I don't know if you know him, but Danny Wilson, uh, he lives, uh, he, when I call him on the phone, he said about 15 miles due north of Rockport. So we've got a technician right here in the area that if there ever is any issues, he can be here on the spot and help out. Um, and he does keep parts in hand. Um, but that being said, they are a reputable company, um, and uh, I do think they would be a great fit for all fire parts. Yeah, the Atlantic has the, the five thousand. The five-year warranty is included in this price of this. That's that's correct. If you all wish to uh, not have that, that can be redacted. Uh, which thirty-three, thirty-three hundred and fifty-five dollars. Yes, sir. Now, which company are you, are you with? The fifty here. Atlantic Emergency okay. Solutions. We're the distributor yeah. for uh, so the one week. For no, this is it. Okay. Yeah. This, is, this is the one. That he has. Is is this the Rosings? Is this isn't it? Rockport. 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 I'm going to say we go with what the chief says. Yeah. Because he says if we go with the more expensive one, he's going to pay different. And then I can I can help some. I'm completely open to. I don't, I, to I don't know that they're. It's up to you. I it's up to you. I have a question. If they're going to give them yeah, extra right. warranty, I mean, I'm all for that. I, I've, I've got, got a And it's, it's 5000 cheaper. Is, yeah. is Danny Wilson the former chief of the fire department? Yes. Yeah. Actually, Danny came down and was the one that serviced our compressor and okay. found out we couldn't get parts for it anymore. Yeah. And Brian Danny services your equipment? The, the yes, sir. He, he's our local service tech for Kentucky. We know him. The MAPCO, you said MAPCO was the brand on the other? Uh, that, I'm just more yeah. familiar with that brand. Well, uh, Something that kind of sells me on the other one is it's uh, made in the USA, and where is the MAPCO made at? I'm not 100% sure. Not, not sure? Okay. Well, since it's here and we know Mr. Wilson, 
that might be where you want to go. Uh, it's up to you. It's your vehicle, like you said. Yeah, there's five thousand dollars difference that built at the five year warranty. I'm hoping either either <laughs> but or either company would outlast me. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm all for saving money. If if they're going to throw the extra warranty in on there, that that makes a great big difference. So uh, actually, sure, the district, if you want to make the motion. Uh, all right, so you want, to, you want to go with the Atlantic, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I propose we take the bid uh, from Atlantic Emergency Solutions for $48,673 for the air bottle deal. Do I hear you say? We uh, need to authorize the answer. Second, uh, and that does include the five year. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's yeah, if you didn't want the five year, you could have two year and save thirty three hundred and fifty five dollars. That's a nice. It gets expensive replacing parts. Yeah, I'm all for the warranty on it. All right, I think we got it. All in favor say aye. Right. Opposed like sign. It's it's yours. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Really do. And I get the, you might get with how we're going to do this. Uh, she's authorized to write the check. So you actually call the company and tell them, or tell them it's right there. Yeah. To bring it in and bring your bill to hurry to pay. Yes, sir. When you deliver it, he says it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, down to uh, uh, committee reports. Jason, I know you were in a committee today. Do you have anything to, any motions to come from that committee? Uh, we didn't act on any. Okay. Okay. No, no. Does any other? Road department. The committee meeting we met and uh, a few things we discussed. There's one we, we are we're going to act on with an incentive program through the uh, parks, but we just feel like that can just roll because it's already there anyway. So we don't have to do anything. It's just okay. going to go, go into effect. Okay. Sounds like y'all got it all figured out. Any other committees meet during since we went here last? Any other committee reports? <coughs> Being none, uh, let's go ahead and ask the uh, let's go to county officials before we do the magistrates. Uh, uh, Landon, you got anything? No, sir. Not this time. Okay. Uh, any other county officials or county departments got anything? Okay, let's go in and then we'll go to, uh, let's start with uh, District 1 this time. So, Brian, you hear how this goes the time we get to you. I, I started on this end one time and that end on one time. Okay, Michael. Well, I have a question for Landon. Television working. Yes, sir. They, uh, <laughs> they came and uh, once we got some things figured out, they came and plugged it in. Everything's working great. So I appreciate yeah. you helping that. That's, that's been a very uh, interesting situation. Yes. Thank you. I have no further from the 1st District. Okay. Uh, Jason. No. Not this time. No. Uh, nothing from the 3rd District. Okay. Uh, fourth district. Uh, this magistrate's just started, so no comment here. <laughs> well, we're w welcome you both. Just glad to be here, right? Now. Welcome yeah. you both. Yeah. All right, Larry. Just same old. We no closer to getting our uh, black top money than we was, correct? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're closer it, ever ever time. And it's just uh, I can't tell you exactly when yet, but we're, we'll push every way we can to get it for this payment season. That it might be next. See, we ain't got a flex contract back in the state yet. Would you, Justin? Uh, no. Thank you. Do appreciate the crowd. We've had a fairly large crowd for us. Uh, uh, Jason. Yeah. The paper I showed you yesterday on the uh, restricting the payroll count. Do you remember enough about that to make the motion? I think that's what it was when we restrict the payroll accounts. Where we're talking about any payroll was they can't from start next 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 fiscal year, right? 
No, start now. Start now. Okay. Let me get this right. I have a copy on my desk. <laughs> Hey, I didn't memorize that motion, but I memorized two new bluegrass songs this week. Miranda can vouch for them. So this is the motion, what it is in effect. In the last three years, we've really jumped some raises up to about the tune of 17, 18%. So to keep saving money through we so instead of wasting money, we can keep doing this in the future. We're I'd like to make this motion. And it says, in an effort to manage payroll and overtime costs and health insurance costs, effective July 1st, 2024, so payroll accounts will be restricted to by line item. Transfers will not be allowed within the payroll accounts referenced below. Transfers to any account other than payroll associated accounts will not be allowed. This includes all payroll, FICA, retirement, and health insurance accounts, and all funds. So they just can't take money out of their payroll, out of their FICA and retirements and put it somewhere else so they can spend it and buy a bunch of stuff at the end of the year. Yeah. Basically what it is is they can't take that payroll money out, put it in operational expense yeah. to buy something unless, you know. Right. That means that uh, and Landon can't use his payroll account and save money. And, and that's all departments. Buying a new car. I, it, I mean, you know. Uh, that Cadillac, uh, he takes that out of that. Oh, we need second. On that, can it be approved? Do they have to come with the needs assessment or how? What, with that bike of money in retirement, he said, like, well, said, just like the pay, even the payroll money. If you had payroll money left mm -hmm. and you had something that you needed to replace or do this or that, then you have the money, but it's unobtainable because of. This it would have to go like you said to the lease assessment. What happens in the past, and there are situations like that they yeah. come to, but what happens is everybody moves it over and they just buy a bunch yeah. of stuff up mm -hmm. so that there won't be any money in the end, which I understand what they're doing. But we also want to keep this, we need surplus money every year and we have, because there's things that come up available every time. Well, if we spend all the money at the end of the year, we don't have that operating money when somebody comes in and we need something because they yeah, went out and bought a bunch of extra stuff. I forget what you're saying, but yeah. it's also kind of situational as well. In some, some instances, if you have the money. But that money will come into the op. And I guess we could look into the extent to see how much money they turned in at the end of the year when we did look at our needs assessment. If they turned in the most amount of money, and they come to the needs assessment yeah. or something like that, we could look at it at that point too. Yeah. And there's not many departments that don't need more help. And if of course. Got an excess, yeah. mm -hmm. It'd be nice if we could hire someone. And, and like I said, pay, they, if they could do that because it's payroll. But, yeah. yeah, you can do that with payroll. Right. You just can't go out and buy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. Correct. Correct. I hate to say toys. Right. You know what I mean? But I mean, buy. Where's Charlie? Do I hear a second? Second. You got a second from Michael. Roll call. Okay. Second from Michael. Roll call. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Okay. We have restricted that. Uh, uh, is uh, anything else, does anybody have anything else for good for the body? Did I miss anybody? Okay. Go, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, Cromwell today experienced a weather emergency, a tornado warning, and our sirens did not go off. So I'm, I'm not sure what the complication was with that, but I actually called dispatch and they said that they were working on it, but there were no sirens in Cromwell today. It, it did go off here, it and that's, that's pretty consistent. Uh, we'll see if it's fixed and, and uh, you can listen on Friday if anybody close enough to it and see if it goes off on test. Yeah, I, uh, I understand we were talking about it earlier that systems are changing and it might all be offline at some point in time. Some duck down the road, but now, yeah, now we want them working since we've got them. At this point in time, there's a, quite a few rural people in Cromwell, Kentucky, and I believe those sirens save lots. And we need to try we to will turn that in for repair. Our uh, emergency management guy sort of in charge of that. He not, matter of fact, he's down to Rochester now.
called out down there for, on, on a tornado issue at Rochester. I don't know anything about the details or severity of, uh, severity of it, but they had one. Okay. But thanks, but we'll get that fixed. All right. Thank you. Anybody else got anything? I was going to introduce Judy. Judy's our new uh, lady down in the hard last meeting. She's down in the arch office with Jimmy. So, Judy Trogdon. Hello, everybody. I would like to, if I could, bring up the housing issue in the county for discussion. Um, I feel that we really have a housing crisis in the county. Um, there's different layers to that. Um, there's the homeless. And there's different layers to the homeless. Um, I guess you could say I was kind of ignorant until I learned more. By saying ignorant, I mean I didn't have the knowledge, information. Um, I thought that, um, and I'm sorry about this, but I really did, and I've learned it's not true. I thought that everyone that was homeless was either drug addicts, alcoholics, or wouldn't work. That's not the case. Um, always. Um, we have people in this county that has income, and we have people in this county that's working that can't find housing. It's a big issue. And um, I know that the county is a bit of a, a raw subject with y'all because I know y'all tried to help once before uh, with doing a, a, a type of shelter, and it was for women, and um, it didn't work. It we failed. Actually, we Unfortunately, actually have, it failed. We actually do have a committee looking into it that now. That's awesome. Matter of fact, uh, Donna, that you took her place of, she was on that committee. That's so awesome. So I, I would say that you would take her place on the committee. I'd be glad to. Christina Carpenter is the uh, chairman of it. And okay. uh, she, you might give her a call. Okay. And tell okay. They you you get that us. information to me, and I would love to have that discussion with people. I thought that um, when I started work for the county, I guess it was back in February, I was so different. I thought that we had a homeless shelter in the county. Um, it is not. Um, it's the father's house, and um, it's an awesome place. Um, you know, if there's anybody that wanted to help them out as far as donations or whatever, that'd be great. They do a good thing. It's a recovery house, and it's for addicts. And as far as I know, there has not been no issues with that being in the city of Beaverdale. Um, I feel like there's other layers that we could do, maybe more immediate to help um, with housing. Um, we need more government housing. Um, I won't go into detail, but I do know of eight acres um, that's possibly available, could be even donated. Um, the cities having issues with the uh, eight acres because um, the person lives out of state and he's not taking care of it. It's not being, he's not able to take care of it. And he might would donate that. And that would be perfect where it's at for uh, more government housing. That'd be good. Well, like I said, we're working, looking on all aspects um, of it. Right. And like I said, you call Christina over to Hub and she'll tell you what next meeting going to be. Okay. And I expect they'll bring something to the court when they get a little further along. Okay, but you know, different housing aspects other than just just for the, you know, the total homeless. I mean, I mean, there's people working that needs housing. Yeah. Um, um, I was, uh, I had someone tell me, I would like to know if anybody has an answer for this. There was a, I was told that there was a woman that I know, um, she's a great lady, she's a landlord. Um, she had, um, I don't know, in the past few years, had asked about starting a tiny home community. And she was going to do it in Beaverdam. And I was told, she was told she couldn't do that. Um, does anybody know anything about the, um, any kind of restrictions? The, or, they're in the or, city of Beaverdam and Hartford. There are, but there are places in both cities that can do that. Uh, they was Arthur, uh, the PBA. Uh -huh. He's actually been in contact with with uh, uh, people that's interested in doing that in planning zone. And so awesome. he's actually he's actually been working on that. But I know there, the knowledge is out here. I know the knowledge. It's gonna it's gonna take an army 
is it uh, we already have a foundation established Ohio County resources that could be overseen by the county um, I know a lot of issues uh, the main issue anybody I spoke to about the homeless shelter has been that they'd be people coming in here from other counties and they don't want that and uh, of course Patino or Benedict's come in here they do everything for us and it'd be easy but they would allow people from other counties in here and I know a lot of the people in the county don't want that so with that being said it almost has to be done through the county to set up those rules where it was for our people first or for our people and there is a foundation in place to do that yeah. and I believe we have the knowledge here in this county to figure it out yeah. and I believe we really need to figure it out it seems to be getting worse all the time I know and, and we realize that and, and not, not just not just from homelessness but there's also a shortage of uh, housing for people that would move here and work if it's available. In general, absolutely. So, so this committee is working on all aspects, awesome. all different Good types deal. of housing. Good so, deal. And, and you call for the thing and ask her what's going to be. All right, I'll do it. Thank you, David. I believe it's the fourth Monday, but I'm you can ask judge. her next year. Sorry. Anybody else got anything? If we don't. I did want to say something yes. to you. Chanda Garner. How long, how long are you and Mary? Oh, my God. On the spot, like 12, years now, 12 years that was my first uh being a magistrate one thing you can do is you, you can perform and i've not done very many of it you're looking at the very first one and just, they, they made it this, <laughs> so, one, uh, this one right here she was like yeah. this high between standing between our legs while you did it yeah. wouldn't let go of our legs yeah yeah, yeah. I, I was out you came here and done it, it was, I, I yeah i remember i, I said i, I I wasn't going to do them and they couldn't get anybody else and I remember the whole time driving over I was like if they're young I'm not going to do this and you know their parents would get upset kids. of course the families were there and everything and I thought well let's go ahead and do this and well, it worked out so yeah congratulations yeah I actually knew her since the day she came home from the hospital yeah the baby uh, all well, right. thank y'all for listening to me you're welcome if nobody has anything else, we'll call this meeting adjourned. We'll be back here in two weeks.